it's there. No matter what race you are, you see it. And, and if you don't see it, you must be blind. And, and even if you're blind, you know, like you have to feel it because it's in the air, like you can feel it. Welcome to What You Doing? I'm Roz Goldon Wooday, and today I'm here with Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors. What's up, Spicy P? What you doing? Hey, what's good? What's good? Um, I'm doing good. I'm just, you know, um, staying home, staying healthy, like like everyone is, and and obviously with everything going on, man, just you know, being with family and people that you know you, you care about. Yeah, let's talk about it, man. I mean, you are a guest on the show right now during a time where there's unrest in America. Um, you know, there's conversations, protests going on about racial inequalities, injustice, police brutality. How have you been able to process everything that's been going on? Um, I think, you know, obviously it's a little different for me coming from, you know, from Africa and, and, and not being born in the U.S. or um, just moving when I was 18 years old and, and, and being used, like, used to being the, the, the majority, right? Like, is 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 black people in Cameroon, you know, all, all around, and and um, you know, coming to a different country, you know, where you are the minority, and and um, just just seeing, you know, how um, it, everything that's happening, you know, from injustice and 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 um, profiling, you know, and and all the, the the racism and everything that's going on, man, and and obviously just seeing that video, which was, you know, there's a lot more videos like that, and, and seeing George Floyd, you know, um, begging for his life and um it's it hurts like it hurts it hurts man and 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 i feel like no matter where you are and 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 you can't tell me that you know that video doesn't hurt you and, and it doesn't make you feel some type of way and 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 make you feel like something is wrong in this country and that it needs to change and um i think that's how the people are feeling and and um you know that's why you see all the rage man that's why you see people like combined with covid and people being out of jobs and um, and just people just feeling like they've been felt for so long and, um, and they're just reacting in a way that they know how to react. And, and I just feel like, you know, it's not my job to tell people how to react and I can't tell people how to react. Like they, they're going to react how they feel, you know, and, 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 and they'd be feeling really bad, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it hurts, man. It hurts. Um, and we, we, we want, we want to change. And, and I think, you know, it's time that, you know, we acknowledge that there's there's a problem in that in that, you know, we all acknowledge that there's a problem, you know, no matter the race and, and, and we move forward to change it because uh, the people are tired and, 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 and it's time, time to have the conversations, can't shy away from them anymore. Um, it's there. No matter what race you are, you see it. And, and if you don't see it, you must be blind. And, and even if you're blind, you know, like you have to feel it because it's in the air, like you can feel it. And, and, and I think that um, we, we, we had to now, you know, do something about it. And, and, and me too, coming from, from, from Africa, like obviously I'm learning about everything and I'm doing my research to find ways to help. But I think that, you know, it's time. It's time and the time is now. The time is now for these discussions. I'm, I'm right there with you and, and it does hurt. Um, you know, with those discussions, you work in a predominantly black league. You're on a predominantly black team. Uh, how have the Raptors, how has your team come together as brothers to have those discussions? Have you had those discussions? And if so, what are you guys talking about? Um, I think, you know, we, we have conference calls about it and, and just getting everyone together, man, like coaching staff, um, players, um, everyone. Just, just, you know, this is a problem that's been going on for a long time and just getting everyone's perspective. Because if you look at our team, man, we have people from Spain, Africa, you know, London, and, and I mean, like, the list goes on and on, Americans, like, so we have different cultures and, and, and different perspective on the issue, and, and, and you, know, um, you know, some of them are closer to it than, than others, but at the same time, we all feel it, and I think, you know, just being with those guys, obviously, first, um, sharing our love for each other, knowing that, you know, we care about you, we love you, and, and we are with you, and then also, um, discussing what's been going on, and, and, and I think that's what we've been doing, and we had conversation to find a way to impactfully, you know, um, deal with the issue and, and find a way where, you know, we can all stand together as a unit, you know, to, 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 to make a change. Um, so I think that's what we've been doing uh, as a team and figuring out ways, having discussions, talking 
about it and 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 you know we we're moving we're moving it's moving and and and, and obviously it's, it's a big and long this it's a long discussion um that's gonna go on forever i feel like but it has to start and we have to be be able to you know um tackle the issue absolutely you know and it doesn't end there 2020 has been crazy i mean it's just one thing after another we're still trying to figure out how to live with COVID 19 which mm -hmm. paused the nba season paused the world and paused the nba season since march 11th but the good news is for the league that the nba will be back mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about playoffs y'all have been gone off, off from basketball for four months or so now and then you're just gonna pop into playoffs after eight games <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, but <laughs> I feel like nothing, everything is crazy at, at this time, man. Like, I feel like we, we're getting used to crazy. So it's like, we have to adapt, man. We have to adapt. And I think and I think that's something we've been able to do as a team. Like, we've been going through so many injuries and, and, and the doubts and whatever, you know, always happens. We always find a way, man. And that's, that's just, like I said, another challenge that we have to find a way to, to beat. Are you concerned about contracting coronavirus? Definitely, definitely, man. I think I think it's it's, it's scary it's to think about. Um, but at the same time, I trust that you know the NBA is doing the best that it can, and they're going to put us in the, in the safest environment possible um, to to be able to resume. And and I, I don't think there's a there's a there's a possibility to do it without risk. Like I I don't think there's there's, there's a possibility to do it without risk. But as long as you know it's 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 a low risk, like a very very low risk, I think you know I'm gonna be okay with it. It might be a while till we see the NBA, if we see the NBA as we once knew it. I mean, have you, have you ever taken a moment to consider with you guys winning the championship last year, the Raptors being the champions? Like, that might have been the last championship with fans and a celebration parade that we see for a while. Like, what mm -hmm. does it make you feel to know that you got to experience that and right. that change might be ahead for who knows how long? Right. Um, first, I mean, obviously, I'm excited to, to have experienced the best parade ever. Like, um, and that's, <laughs> I'm definitely, you know, feel, I feel blessed that it was my team that experienced that. I mean, the Toronto fans, man, oh my God, like, so incredible. Just seeing how many people were there that night, man, like, it's, um, you can, because I, I think some people ask you, like, okay, you watch all the championships that you probably dreamed of the parade and you imagine it. Like, I could never imagine anything like that. Like, in my wildest dreams, like, you know, to see that many people, you know, hanging from trees and being on top of buildings, like, literally, it was the most amazing thing ever, um, and, and, and I'll definitely remember that for the rest of my life, and now, just thinking about, you know, everything that's going on, and knowing that it might be, you know, like, that's crazy to think about, like, I, I, I don't really want to think about that, to be honest, man, like, because, you know, it's, it's, it's so scary, and, and like, to think that that might never happen again, like because of this, you know, Corona and everything that's been going on, like that's scary. That's, that's super scary. If you were to win back to back, would you see the champ, the two championships as different? Uh, no, not really. I think it, the, the challenges would probably be greater, man. Like I think, I think just because of everything that's going on, it's like you know you have the locker years or like or whatever or like whatever when when the season just get cut the way that that it did. And now, it's like, you can't have fans. You can't have, you know, all these things in the arena. Like, you have to go to one environment for, like, months to be able to finish this. Like, literally, like, it's something that <laughs> never happened before. And, and, and I don't think that it makes it less of a championship. Like, I think it, it just makes it, like, you know, you, you went through, like, much more, I feel like, to, to be able to win. And, and, and um, I think it will be as sweet as every other championship. Here's the thing that I do know. Every year you've been putting in work. You know, you are an NBA champion. You were most improved player. This year mm. you're an all-star. You were mm. valid. Mm. You were validated. <laughs> validated with the max contract. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so as I see my friend Pascal rising in this league, I want to, and I don't want you to be bashful, Pascal. You got to say it to believe it. How do you see yourself positioned in this league? I definitely feel like, you know, it, it's, it's my time. Like, I think, I think it's my time. I feel like, you know, um, it, it's a lot of work that's been put in and, and that's, the, you know, I'm still working every single day. Um, like working on my game, making sure that I'm the best that I can. Um, 
and and obviously I just feel like you know like uh, it's my time like I don't I don't see anything stopping me and and um I just have that confidence and 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 obviously I put the work in to back it up and and um you know I, I just I just feel like you know I'm, I'm I'm up there for sure. How up? That, that's that's on you to decide. Like I'm up there. I know I'm up there. And and <laughs> and the rest, you know, y'all gotta decide where. But but, I, but I'm okay. up there. Do you feel that you're still slept on in some ways? Um and like to be honest, like I don't really care. Like <laughs> I don't I don't really care. Like I I don't I never I, I never look at that. Like okay, you're being slept on. And like like I don't care. Like for me, it's about you know putting the work in, making sure that I put the work in and you can't ignore me and make sure that you can't ignore me. Like, that's it. Your father, may he rest in peace, was a huge inspiration for you in goal setting, mm -hmm. wanting to get to the NBA. You've reached his dreams for you. So now as you sit here, I, I just want to know what motivates Pascal at this point? Um, I, think, I think obviously there's always that, you know, being able to do everything that I do for him. Like that's like, First of all, that's like the like the highest motivation for me because I feel like, you know, like that's my purpose, like in, in life, no matter basketball, whatever the case might be, because I just I just always remember him as being someone that was kind, someone that did everything to help people, and and you know, someone that was like goal driven and worked really hard to accomplish what he did in his life, you know, was was wasn't didn't come from a rich family, you know, worked really hard to make sure that he had his kids and make sure that his kids were good. Um, and, and, you know, like, he's just an example for me. Like he's the, he's, he's, he's everything that I look, I look up to. Like, I, I just want to be like him. I want to make sure that I had the impact that he had on people just because, you know, like he, he was such a kind person. And, and if you look at everyone that knows him, you know, they will tell you that. And, and, and I don't think anyone can, can speak bad on his name just because of that's how great of a person he was. Um, so I think my job, man, he, he always loved to look at young people and, and make it, he always said that, you know, education was, you know, one of the, 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 the most like amazing thing ever, or like the best thing that we can do, like educating the young people. And that's why my job has always been to, you know, look at the, the, the younger generation, making sure that I do everything, you know, to be an example for them, making sure that they know that, you know, everything that I'm accomplishing is possible and they can do it. And they can accomplish all these same things if they put the work in. Um, and and that, that was his mission also, like uh, educating the, 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 the youth and, and the next generation. And I think I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of my life. We are now at the end of the show. And every <laughs> what you doing ends with a challenge. <laughs> hey, let's get it. Ooh, I like your energy, Spicy Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's all right. All right. So the challenge I created for you was a first time challenge. And that's because life is rapidly changing for you all the time. It seems every year for you, Pascal. So we're, <laughs> we're going to slow it down and take a stroll down memory lane and look at some of your biggest firsts. You mm -hmm. ready? Yep. I right. get it. Who was the first player to ever have you starstruck? Um, just an, another opponent, like my preseason game, we played the, the Warriors, and I think I think for me it was just like Kevin Durant, um, because it was definitely someone that you know I watched and and seeing his game too. So like you know that was pretty cool. Like that was a cool moment to be able to guard him my first preseason game. Like that was pretty cool. Who was your first friend in the NBA? First friend in the NBA, definitely Jakob uh, Jakob Pertl, um drafted together. Um, you know. Uh, I, I'm still I'm still mad at him because uh, when when we had our workout with the Raptors, um, he <laughs> they had a separate workout for him because he was supposed to be like a higher draft pick, and and they had a separate workout. He was doing layups and he was doing hook shots, and he was all looking all cute on the other side. And I was out there, you know, sweating and <laughs> and, and working hard on the other side. So <laughs> I think. <laughs> That was always one of my best friends with Yaka, man. But, but no, nah, that's definitely my best friend from, you know, uh, when I got the NBA. Um, just, you know, we just related. And, and we hung out the most of the time because we were the, the, both the uh, – we, we Fred, obviously, but, you know, um, <laughs> we were the rookies out there. That is hilarious, especially <laughs> now. Like, you know, you kind of the big dog right now. I'm sure you <laughs> – Nah, Yaka's still the big dog, man. Yaka's always the no, big, no. Dog, big dog. Big <laughs> dog. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Jamal, Jamal, Jamal McGraw, we know that. Who? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that your best big dog impersonation? I got it. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. All right. Here yeah. we go. Here we go. Here we go. First instrument you ever played? Well, I'm learning the piano now. I think I would say that's the first instrument that I, that I played. But I don't really play it because I'm learning. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> if you guys win the championship, will you play some piano in the celebration? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> no I, don't, I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> All right. Um, First thing that you were good at besides basketball? Soccer. Easy. I was, I was a great soccer player. Excellent. Think you could have been a pro? <laughs> yeah, definitely. First meal you learned to cook for yourself? Maybe like we do like a little like a spaghetti with like eggs thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's like a mix and it's like an omelet basically. Yeah, y'all don't know nothing about this. Spaghetti and... Um... What else you Sardines. Sardines? Yeah, it's, it's probably nasty to y'all, but <laughs> this is fire right there. This is it. What's the name of that dish? On a person en français, in French, it's like spaghetti oeuf. So it's like, a, that's just how I call it. It's like eggs and spaghetti, basically. What's the first car you ever owned? First car I ever owned. I don't really own a car, to be honest. I don't. How do you get around? Yeah. Well, I, I have cars, but like I don't own them. Like they just give me cars and I drive them. Oh, must be nice. Be smart, people. Be smart, people. You don't <laughs> have to if you don't need it. <laughs> all right. Well, if we could all be as lucky as you. Um, <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you on this What You Doing. We've covered a lot today. A lot of different things happening in the world right now. So thank you for coming by What You Doing, my friend. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Congrats to you, too. I see you, you know, moving up to doing your thing. And, uh, you know, I uh, definitely appreciate you having me on the show. And, you know, keep going, man. Africa, we're going to stick together. We're going to get we're gonna get this going and, and uh, you know, just happy and excited, you know, to see you do big things, too. So, uh, congrats. Thank you. From Cameroon to Nigeria to the world. All <laughs> love. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.